Hello, everyone. This is another Black Conservative. I am Ryan Bowling. Thank you all for joining me once again. You know that as the president of the United States that you are in trouble when politicians from your own political party begin to chastise you about the influx of illegals coming into the country. And this article I'm about to read, it will give you the detailed analysis of just that serious problem. In Chicago, New York, we're seeing these influx of illegals flooding these cities and these states like it's crazy. And you are in trouble when your own people in your own party start saying things like, man, you need to do something about this border crisis situation because it is hurting us. Common sense, really. Let's get right into this article. Yeah, let's get right into this. People have been talking about this for quite some time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So the article starts off with Democrat officials in deep, deep blue Massachusetts are getting fed up as consequences of Joe Biden's border crisis continues to reverberate in the Northeast. Governor Healy has been clear that she wants Biden to cut loose with more money and federal aid to the state to pay for the thousands of illegal fl illegals flooding the state. And she has also called for fast for fast tracked work permits to get the illegals earning a paycheck. So far, her requests have fallen on deaf ears in the White House. Now, why is that? Why is that? I mean, after all, these are the political. I mean, these are your people. <laughs> these are Democrats. They're asking for this aid and, and the government is not doing it. Right. What's going on here? Deaf ears. I mean, you the one. Biden was the one that said we're going to let. The, he's the one that's basically saying, OK, I don't care about the border right now. Let me let me go back a little bit. What I'm hearing now, I'm going a little too fast. And what I am hearing is that now he wants to build like 20 miles of, uh, you know, border uh, border walls. Now, now he wants to revert, go back on what he said he was going to do. You know, first he wanted to you know, say, I'm not going to build any border. I'm not going to build any more walls. OK. That's what he argued during his campaign, okay, when he started campaigning against uh, Trump. I'm not going to build any more. Uh, 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 I'm not going to build any more. It's not going to be under my watch. I'm not going to build any more walls, okay? Now, all of a sudden, he sees the problem going on. So, supposedly, from what I'm hearing, he wants to build, like, 20 miles of, of border wall security. Okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, but, but you see here, you have people in your own political party that's crying out to you for help. The legal's still coming in. These people are illegals. They're, they haven't been vetted. And they're still flooding in. And these people, these, these, these politicians are crying out to the Biden administration to do something about it, whether it's stop the illegal flow or give more assistance monetarily. But it's falling on deaf ears. That's a crying shame. That's a crying shame. Let's go on. Let's go on. But state lawmakers are also getting restless over Biden's inact inaction on the issue, according to the Boston Herald. So the gun is running for the guy is running for president. He better start paying attention to this. House Speaker Ronald Moreno, Ronald Moreno told reporters the paper reported. Wow, that's pretty that's pretty heavy. Senate President Karen Spout. Spilka also put the administration on notice saying, quote, I don't want to let them off the hook so easily either, she said, adding that she that she needs to, quote, get a response from the feds. Mm hmm. But they need but they need to help us. Spiker explained Massachusetts has seen some sixty eight hundred border crossers arrive in the state. While that is a far small, smaller number than the influx inundating Chicago and New York City. Bay State officials say that their resources are also already stretched to the full extent available. Now, check this out. Healy's office says that about 1,000 new migrant families are arriving every month and caring for them is costing the state $45 million monthly. State officials are also demanding that the federal government stop ignoring the crisis and get a handle on what states such as Massachusetts can expect to see as the migrant influx continues, but Healy's frust frustration is boiling over, the Herald reported. And it says in September, Healy blasted the Biden administration and said, quote, I think it's clear help help isn't coming from the feds. I mean, we've been continuing to call upon, call upon and call upon the federal government and Congress to act. And it is because help has not been forthcoming that we find ourselves in this situation. In the meantime, Hilly wants to add an additional $250 million to the previous, previously allocated $325 million being spent 
on the state's emergency shelter system. But Massachusetts is far from alone. So we got places like Chicago and, 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 and uh, 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 New York. And, and you can read the rest of that article on your own. I'm going to stop right there because it's pretty straightforward about what it is, what's going on here. You can read the article, the rest of the article on your own in the description box below. But suffice it to say that the Biden administration is under a tremendous pressure by people from its own party that is crying out to him to do something about this. I mean, if you're going to let the borders be wide open, you want to let these illegals come in here, at least give us financing to be able to assist these people. Because at the end of the day, if you're a state or you're a city, you're going to run out of money and you need somebody to help you. <clears throat> it's amazing to me how the federal government pushes all this kind of humanitarian nonsense you know, they just get up here with their hands in their pocket and they, they're smooth talkers and then they're able to manipulate the masses and be like, yes, that's so right. We need to help people that can't help themselves. Woo, 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 woo. They're saying all this kind of rhetoric, like, like, like Thomas Sowell often calls it rhetoric. OK, they talk all this rhetoric, whether it's on the left or the right, they talk all this rhetoric. And then at the end of the day, they sit down and this influx of, of illegals come into the country and flood the cities and flood the states. The states and the cities can't afford to pay for them. The people cry out for help from the federal government. What do they do? The same ones that were hooping and hollering and giving us all this rhetoric and giving us this moral speech about morality and caring for the poor are sitting with their hands in their pocket not doing a doggone thing. And here's the crazy thing about it. If and, if and whenever the Biden administration does decide to give extra money to this state, to these politicians here to assist these uh, illegals, because they're illegally here, okay, let's stop playing games. That's not government money. That's your money and my money. <laughs> it's taxpayer money. Now, it's crazy. Let me mention something here about the whole thing about immigration. What, what some people might not know is that in the early 1900s, on the 1920s, 1930s, there was a quota system that was put in place to limit the amount of immigrants that would come here. And I'm not talking about illegally. I'm talking about legally. There was a quota system because million, I would say from the 18, late to mid 1800s, mid to late 1800s, up until the early 1900s, 19th century, over, I think it was like 15 million Immigrants from Europe had migrated to America from Europe. So this quota system that was put in place by politicians to limit the amount of immigrants that would come to America was from it was placed on Europeans because most of the people that immigrated here to America wasn't from Asia, wasn't from Africa or any of the other countries or continents for that matter, but was from Europe. Most of the people that immigrated here during this time period was from Europe and a quota system was placed on them. But that quota system was reversed in the 1960s by uh, the Lyndon Johnson, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson administration and others because it was considered to be racist. OK, sounds familiar, doesn't it? Stuff, this kind of stuff been going on for decades. So since it's been reversed, right, just let them come on in, come on in, come on in. Here's the thing. And, and this may be kind of controversial. But I'm just giving you my view on this. And when you look at it from a purely natural perspective, how many people do you think a country can actually house? If you already have your own native born people there in the millions, OK, in the millions, and then you just continuously allow others to come over into the country. Right. How many people do you think the country is going to be able to actually hold? How many people do you think that the country is going to actually be able to pay for and to assist? It's not really a whole lot to think about. That's like if I, you know, it's like my own home. Use my own home, for example. You know, I have a home, you know, or an apartment or a home to use a home. It's good to be kind and to help those who don't have and to house them and so forth. But guess what? At the end of the day, you're going to have to set a limit because why? You can't house and take care of everybody because your house is not big enough and you don't have enough money to do so. 
And in order to get the money, you're probably going to have to get a better job or you're going to probably have to get a loan from someone. Either way it go, you're not going to be able to take care of all these people that you're trying to take care of because you have a heart of kindness, which is good. We're supposed to have that heart of kindness. But you can't take care of everyone. Same principle in the country. You can't take care of everyone. We don't have the money nor the space to do so. And now people... In this own political party, I'm saying, Biden, we are really in a crisis. Conservatives have been saying it for uh, uh, years ad nauseum. But now <laughs> the Democrats are saying, hey, man, we got a crisis here. And you're running for president. You better pay attention to what's going on. You're running for re-election, rather, if you will. You better pay attention to what's going on. But it seems that Biden is not really paying attention to what's going on. Maybe because cognitively he's not able to do so. <laughs> Like Trump says, the man don't even know where he's at half the time. I partly believe that. But or either that or he is controlled and manipulated by others in the back that's giving him what to say, giving him the policy mandates. And I partially believe that. But the bottom line is this, man, we have to take it. We, we have to we have to curb it. And whether people want to say, hey, it's racist or whatever, say what you want to say, because when it starts knocking on your back door. OK. And, and, and start knocking on your back door and, and, and committing crimes in your city, in your neighborhood, then all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's all that kindness that people had, it leaves, it goes right out the door. You know, Now you're not kind anymore. Now you're crying out to the politicians. Leave them, let them go back to where they was at. Woo, 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 woo. I've heard this said by many people in, in places like Chicago. I've seen videos on that where the residents crying out and crying out to the council. You need to send them back to this place. You need to send them back to where they don't, don't let them come over here. Well, you voted for them. You get, I'm going to quote the words of uh, ABL. You get what you vote for. You voted for him. Man told you right up front what he was going to do. He told you that. But because you're so pro-Democrat, because you're so kind, you have all this love in your heart for everyone that's been misguided. Now you've fallen for the rhetoric. You've fallen for the brainwashing technique. And now he's just sitting back. Brand, uh, uh, Brandon Johnson, the great, mighty uh, 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 mayor of Chicago, is giving you Back all that rhetoric, he, he, he's, he's still just sitting back with his hands in his pocket, talking all professional and calm and say, calm down, people. We're going to do this. We need this. We need a pro I mean, he's a classic politician. Brandon Johnson is classic politician because he knows how to use rhetoric to stir the people up, to calm the people down. Hey, I got to hand it to him for that. I got to hand it to him for that. He's able to manipulate, but you got to get past the rhetoric and the manipulation and the appealing to your emotions and look at the factual data and try to use common sense and say, wait a minute, this is just not working. For one, and I'm going to start in this video, for one, a lot of these illegals are coming from different countries. They're not just coming from uh, 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 Mexico. It's a bunch of bull crap. They're not just coming from Mexico. They're coming from, they're coming from Asia. They're coming from different African countries. And a lot of these people that are coming here are not coming here legally. So we don't know what kind of lifestyle they lived in the country that they were in. Kindness is not going to fix the problem. Being compassionate is not going to fix the problem. You have to use discernment coupled with compassion and kindness. Okay, that's Bible. That's Bible. I hate to preach, but that's Bible. I'm saying that on here on, on purpose in case someone I know may be watching this. Yes, I'm throwing off on you. You got to mix that up. You just can't go and just do things, just arbitrarily do things, talk about you being kind. And you can't do that because you, it's going to end up coming in. It's going, in the end, it's going to end up biting you in the butt. And then you're going to be left wanting these people to go back to where they came from. No, 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 no. Let me end the video on this. Anytime these politicians, whether they liberal or, 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 or Republican, but this is mostly the liberals that do it, but Republicans are part of it too because they just sit back with their hands in their pocket don't say nothing. Anytime these politicians get up here and give these speeches about we need to help this and we need to do this and we need to help this and we need housing and we need affordable housing, this, that, and the other, don't fall off that's rhetoric. Because they'll spit all that at you, but now one of them is willing to take money out of their pocket and assist these homeless people. That money is coming out of your pocket. Those of you that work, that's coming out of your pocket. 
Now one of them will lift a finger to help these so-called people from other countries. That's money coming out of your pocket. So what happens? Your taxes go up. More money is taken out of your pocket. Uh, 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 inflation starts rising. I mean, come on, man. This is what's going on. And we should all be kind. Yes, we should all be kind, but I think we should use good judgment as well. And in this instance, the president of this country right now is not using good judgment. He's not using good judgment. And now his own kind, his own party is chastising him for it. And rightly so. So that's what I have to say about that. What do you guys think about uh, President Biden's uh, uh, own political party speaking against him about these uh, illegals coming over here and flooding their cities and states? What do you guys think about that? You think it's right? You think it's wrong? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless you all. See you again.